This is just a quick video to go over, you know, how to look at how to graph a couple of MPL functions. So we know that we're looking at our labor demand curve and down here on the horizontal axis is our labor. So both of these graphs will put L here on that horizontal axis. And we are going to be measuring that real wage up here on the vertical axis. And you might be like, well, in our equation, right, our equation up here, where is that real wage? Well, at this point in the class, we are going to be assuming that the wage that's going to be paid or that's going to be, you know, willing to be paid, which is what our demand curve is, is equal to that MPL. Now, of course, we can change that assumption. We can look at the real world and say that, you know, people don't get paid their uh, marginal product of labor. But for now, to learn the basic theory, we are going to assume that the firm is willing to pay up to the marginal product of labor which is how we get this labor demand curve. So the first one is linear, right? We, we see there's no, uh, there's no exponent or anything like that. So this first one over here on the left is linear. My favorite way to solve this is let's just assume that L is equal to zero, right? This is at the origin. So if L is equal to zero, then the MPL is 100, meaning the maximum up here is going to be 100. Now, on the other side, right, what happens if the real wage is equal to zero? Well, in that case, just put zero in for the MPL. So, you know, what is the what is the number of workers that will produce no additional output, right? That marginal product of labor. So that's 100 minus 4L. Uh, and you should be able to see that that's going to equal to 25. If not, you can do that math out on your own. So we get uh, 25 here on our horizontal axis. Let's just connect those it's with the straight line, since we know this is a linear function, and there we have it. We have now graphed our first labor demand. This is my MPL, which is also the demand for labor curve. Now, what if we're over here on the right? Uh, and this is not linear, right? So this can be rewritten as, you know, some people might look at this and say, well, I don't see that there's any sort of exponent, but really this is the same as uh, 400 times L to the minus one. So you have an exponent that's not equal to one. So how is this gonna look? Well, I like to do the exact same way. Uh, if L was equal to zero, right? If this is the origin, L is equal to zero. Well, that's gonna be, you know, infinite. So it's like somewhere way up here. It's gonna continue to go. The, the limit's going to reach that, uh, that's zero, so it's going to be an infinite value. Now, what happens if w is equal to zero? It's going to be the same thing if, you know, it's going to come kind of down here. So there's going to be some sort of, you know, function that looks like this. Uh, what you'll notice here, I'm going to erase parts of it because we really only care about, uh, you know, the part that we're really looking at. So we'll see uh, in your in your textbook and some of our examples, we'll see that your MPL may have this uh, kind of convex shape that you that you see right here. But either way, uh, we're just really interested in that inverse relationship to show that uh, diminishing marginal product of labor. But the same thing is going to happen on both sides. Like if I were to say, okay, labor is going to be equal to 10. So, you know, what is the, you know, what's the maximum amount that this firm is going to be willing to pay? If there were 10 workers, we just plug that 10 into uh, into this function and we would get 60 for our real wage. And on this side, you know, we may as well go ahead and do the same thing. We'll just plug in 10. And what's that going to happen, right? This is, again, just a function. So it's going to go over to this point. I plug in 10, 400 divided by 10 is going to equal to 40. So that's how we're going to be graphing and analyzing a few of these functions for our labor demand curve. Again, this is the basic theory that, you know, that wage that's being willing to pay is equal to that marginal product of labor. But of course, we know the labor market is much more dynamic than a simple model. But in order to get to those more complex ideas, you know, monopsonies and whatnot, we do need to have a solid foundation. So make sure that you uh, understand all of this stuff and then, you know, take future classes in labor economics if you want to dig a little deeper.